Good morning, and welcome to Kingdom Kids. Who's excited to be here? Who's excited to be here? There we go. It's so lovely hearing your voices. And welcome to those that are watching online. Today is a very, very exciting day. We are going to be learning about baptism. And if you watch later, there are... There's three people that are going to be getting baptized, and so we'll get to watch that. But we're going to learn about how Jesus was baptized and why he was baptized. So let's sit down and let's just pray before we watch. Father, I thank you so much that you gave us a symbol to show us, to show others that we are followers of you. So Father, as we go into our lesson, may your word penetrate our hearts and our minds that that seed will be planted and will grow forever father holy spirit come and just speak to us in jesus name amen <laughs> Check 
In the days prior to Jesus' ministry on earth, a man who wore strange clothing and ate strange food was preaching a powerful message in the wilderness. His name was John, and he told crowds of people that the kingdom of heaven was about to appear and that they should turn from their sins and wash themselves clean through the baptism. His emphasis on baptism earned him the name John the Baptist. As word of John the Baptist's message spread, crowds of people traveled to the Jordan River to confess their sins and be baptized. While many of these people were genuinely sorry for their sins, there were those who came only for show. These religious leaders, called Pharisees, came to be seen by the people, not because they wanted to be closer to God. John the Baptist warned them that God would not be fooled by impostors and that only those with genuine faith would be received. John's warning to the Pharisees continued as he began to describe a very special man who would come after him. This man would be so great that John wouldn't even be worthy to touch his sandals. This man would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. This great man John described would be the promised Messiah. As John the Baptist continued to baptize people in the Jordan River, Many wondered about the man he had spoken of to the Pharisees. One day, a man from the town of Galilee came to be baptized. John the Baptist immediately knew who this man was. He was Jesus, the promised Messiah that John had told the Pharisees about. John was filled with awe and a bit of confusion. As Jesus approached, John the Baptist couldn't believe that Jesus would wade into the water with him. John, filled with confusion, asked Jesus, Why are you doing this? I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, and yet you want me to baptize you? Jesus reassured John by saying, It is right to do all that God requires. In obedience to the Father, Jesus was baptized by John. This was an incredible moment in which Jesus the perfect, sinless Son of God, identified with those he came to save. As Jesus was baptized, he entered into the pain and sin of all people. While Jesus had no sins to confess and be cleansed of, his baptism was an act of faith and obedience. As Jesus rose up out of the water, the heavens opened above him, and the Holy Spirit descended from heaven in the form of a dove that came to rest upon Jesus. This amazing sight was followed by the booming sound of the Father's voice saying, This is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. Jesus' baptism serves as an example for us to follow. We've allotted him 10 minutes, and I think uh, we're running about eight minutes behind. So th this, this should be exciting, folks. But, Father, we thank you for Pastor Des, and we just pray that in this short time he has to share with us this morning, that uh, we will hear your word. Amen. Well, I can just talk really fast this morning and get through this message. So here we go. Hallelujah. Yeah. Romans 8, 6, 4. <laughs> We were therefore, therefore, uh -oh. we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we take too may live a new life. I'm gonna stop trying to talk to us. This isn't gonna. It's gonna take me longer. Baptism today, as we, uh, as we not only I want to talk about it a little bit, but we're going to actually witness it. We're going to practice it. What the what the Bible talks about. Um, it's really one of the foundations and one of the ordinances that Jesus left us before He returned to be with the Father. Something that He commanded us to to walk into practice.
to fulfill personally in our walk with him and as our in our life as a as a christian in the christian faith and um baptism is a number of things but <clears throat> excuse me i believe it really in some ways signifies the tipping point of my inner convictions it's it's a response that i have actually repented of my sin and determined to follow christ baptism is a public confession by a person stating that they have decided to follow Jesus and to live for him. Baptism confirms that I believe that Jesus is the risen Son of God who died for my sins, that I believe that he was crucified and that he rose from the dead three days after, and that salvation is found in his name. Because remember our Bible story. What was our Bible story on? Not, yes, John the Baptist, but what did he do? He baptized Jesus. He baptized Jesus. So here I have a whiteboard. Now what kind of markers do we use on our whiteboard? Who can tell me? Matthew. Blue, green, red. Blue, green, red. But do we have these special markers? Yes. Yes, why? Because they won't come off. Well, here I have two kinds of markers. I have a dry erase marker in red. I also have a Sharpie marker in blue. Which one should I use on my nice, clean whiteboard? Red. The red one, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use the Sharpie blue marker. Okay? Do you think it will come out? No. No? Yes. Well, let's see. I'm going to write a special word on this clean whiteboard. I'm going to make it nice and thick. And start writing so that it So this whiteboard represents us. What word does that say? Sin. Sin. Does everyone have sin in their life? Yes. Do I have sin in my life? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I know I do. I, I know I do. But you know what? It doesn't have to stop there. Because here we have the dry erase. The dry erase top. What color? I forgot one thing over here, so just give me a second. What does the dry erase felt? What color is that? Red. What else is the color red? Blood. So here we have sin. I couldn't find my black because I'm using blue. Here we have sin written all over my, my life. Whose blood is red? Cadillac. Jesus' blood is red. So, when we accept him into our lives, what happens? What does he do? He covers the sin. Are you sure this works? Did you try this before? What do you think? My, my red felt is, I think I took my old red felt. So I've covered the sin in, in red, in his blood. So I'm all covered, I'm all clean, because his blood has covered me. You can't see the sin anymore. But here I have rubbing alcohol. Pardon me? Who is talking? I didn't hear what you said. Anyways. So here I have rubbing alcohol. We all know that we have been covered by his blood. So we know that we don't have sin. But what baptism is, is it shows the world that his blood, that we are clean by his blood. His blood has cleaned us. 
His blood is what has made us pure. His blood is what keeps us singing and living in our world today. Thank you, Vanessa. My thing is moving all over the place. So by his blood, we are pure. By his blood, our sin is covered. It is no longer noticed. But through baptism, it is what shows the world that we are we are pure and holy and set apart and covered by his blood. Baptism is saying to everyone out there that we are no longer living in sin. We are no longer choosing disobedience to God. We are choosing to be obedient to him. We are choosing to live a life that is obedient to God. So, baptism is so important because it tells our family and our friends that we are choosing to follow God. We are choosing to say no to sin and no to lying and no to any of those things. And yes to God. Yes, I will follow you no matter how hard, no matter how difficult it gets, no matter what comes at us, what temptations come at us, we are choosing to say, yes, I will follow God no matter what. So baptism, if you've not chosen to get baptized yet, just pray about it and think about it. Because you know what? That is something, that is a step of obedience to God. Saying, yes, I want to get baptized is a step of obedience to God. It's a step to saying, it's a step of saying to everyone else that we are choosing to be obedient. Oh, and now, let's tune our ears to something else. Kingdom Kids, how are you doing today? Like this side was okay, but this <laughs> side over here. How are you doing today, Kingdom Kids? <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Hey, my name's Ryan Wiesner. I'm the director of Madge Lake Bible Camp. Question, has anyone here ever been to Madge Lake Bible Camp? Yes. Okay. I will tell you this. There's quite a few hands in here that went up, but there's not nearly enough. And so this year at Madge Lake Bible Camp, we can actually, we're going to be doing quite a few different things. We're going to be doing day camps here at Prairie Harvest. And that's going to be in the middle of July. And then we were going to have a third week of day camp here at Prairie Harvest from the 3rd to the 6th of August. But we actually ended up, ended up canceling that one because the government has opened restrictions so we can actually have overnight camp at the camp this summer. And so that's awesome. And we are so excited about it. Okay, so here's what I know. Camp is fun. Here's what I also know. That God has an amazing plan for each of you boys and girls. And part of that plan might be to come to camp and to experience God's love in a more just meaningful way. I know that we get lots out of Kingdom Kids, and I know that it's really, really fun. But sometimes it's so fun to go for a whole week to find out more about God. Okay, so what I wanted you to do is at the end of Kingdom Kids today, I want you to go to my little booth out in the foyer. And in that little booth, I have some cards. And the cards that I wanted to show you are like white, and they're pretty colorful. They have like some brown and some blue and some yellow on them. And they have all the dates of camp. And they direct you to our website. And then what you do is you go pick up one of these papers, then you go to your mommy and daddy, and you say, mommy and daddy, let's go check out this website together. Okay, cool? Awesome. Okay, Kingdom Kids, I'd love to see you.